Okay, welcome to another set of multiple choice questions. What we're going to do this time is we're going to take four separate questions which each fit into the topic of market structures. By the way, there's a QR code on the screen ahead of you. If you want to go to our main collection of web pages on market structures to help with revision, all you have to do is just point your phone at the QR code and that should take you straight away to the web page. So here's our first question. What is a feature of a natural monopoly? What is a feature of a nat natural monopoly? A, B, C or D are your choices. Press the pause button, have a go at the question. Come back to me when you're ready for the answer. So the correct answer to this question is B. B is the right answer to this question. It's the main feature of a natural monopoly. Here's a key definition and key diagram of a natural monopoly. A natural monopoly is where the very high fixed costs of establishing, for example, the network to build and supply a, a good or a service. So, for example, the underground or, or the network of pipes in the water industry. Fixed costs are high, marginal costs are quite low, and as a result, the marginal cost is less than the average cost. And this drags down the average cost so that the average cost falls across the range of output. Which is why the answer to this question is B, because the average cost curve continues to fall across the full range of output. Here's a second question. The theory of contestable markets can be applied to which market structure or structures? The theory of contestable markets can be applied to which of those market structures? Take a moment to press the pause button and have a go at the question. Come back to me when you're ready. So what do we reckon for this particular question? The correct answer to this question is A. It can be applied to all three of monopolistic competition, monopoly and oligopoly. Any type of market structure can be contestable. Any type of market structure. The key factor that determines whether a market is contestable is the scale and the height, if you like, of the barriers to entry and exit. Now, providing the barriers to entry and exit are relatively low, you get a lot of actual competition, but crucially, the threat of competition. And that can certainly apply in a monopoly and also in an oligopoly. There's the threat of competition, not necessarily across the entire industry, but perhaps in a particular good or service supplied to consumers. So that's the second question. Two more to go. A firm is already the monopoly producer of product X. Which of those four strategies, A, B, C or D, might the firm pursue in order to prevent new firms from entering the market for product X? So if they want to stop a new firm coming into the market, which of these is the correct strategy? Again, press the pause button when you're ready. Have a go at the question. Think about your answer. And let's cross. Uh, let's, let's check again in a second or two. So the correct answer to this question on monopoly pricing is B, it's limit pricing. Cooperation is not a, a, not a valid response. The main choice, I guess, would be between B and C, limit pricing and predatory pricing. So limit pricing uh, is when a firm sacrifices their short-term profits by cutting their price and making their price sufficiently low to make entry into the market unprofitable for a potential competitor. Predatory pricing is when you price deliberately below cost in order to drive out an existing competitor, although the question, of course, does say prevent a new firm from entering the market. Collusion is often the way in which existing firms in the market uh, maybe agree a price cartel to fix a high price to increase their joint profits. So the correct answer to this question is limit pricing. That's option B. And here's our fourth question. I hope you're doing well. What is the defining characteristic of an oligopolistic industry? What is, of those options, A, B, C and D, what is the defining characteristic of an oligopolistic industry? Have a go. Okay, here we go again. Let's see. The correct answer to this question is C. The defining characteristic of an oligopoly is mutual interdependence. An oligopoly can be contestable. It's not the defining characteristic, 
you know, it could be the threat of new entry. Uh, but typically in an oligopoly, the entry barriers are fairly high, so the degree of contestability is often quite low. A large number of firms, no, an oligopoly is defined as an industry dominated by a few large firms. Uh, there could be a small number, there could be a large number, it doesn't really depend, there could be lots of firms in an oligopoly, but it's dominated by a few large firms. Price rigidity, or so-called sticky prices, uh, is a possible result of oligopoly. Firms may, for example, choose to, to compete on the basis of non-price competition rather than aggressive price wars. But it's not a defining characteristic of an oligopoly. Mutual interdependence is, however, and that's why the answer is C. Mutual interdependence is fundamental to oligopoly. In other words, in an oligopoly, where you have a few firms competing with each other, one firm, when it's making a price decision or an investment decision, they have to consider the likely reaction of the rival firms, for example, to a change in their price. And that's what we mean by mutual interdependence. Many of you will have studied game theory as part of your study of oligopoly. Of course, that tries to model the reaction functions of different firms. So how did you get on with those four questions on market structures? Again, if you want to access some web uh, resources, some uh, collection of study notes on market structures, just point your camera at the QR code, and that should, if you have the right software on your camera, take you to the tutor website. But thanks for having a go at these four questions.